Congrats to you, cock. Congratulations, you cock. Just doing a quick... <laughs> doing a quick little update on Pete's work and, uh, Petey, what you think? <laughs> hey, where's the freaking gabagoo? Uh, might be the only ones. It was a solid, solid field. I liked yeah. it. We were both fans. Breast milk. Nature's first vaccination. Yeah. Said. So far, so far for me, as, as a true love. Look like that. Yeah. Hey. 40 yards from the highway on one end and then maybe 20 on the other end. Yeah. So. That was a perfect opportunity for Rascal Flats to sing halftime show. Because, uh, Life is a highway. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it, folks. <laughs>day I've ever had. I don't know, it just looks like that like synthetic fake wood that like
you'd use for like a school desk or something. Uh, one thing I noticed is there are a lot of flags here. You can tell they got a lot of Jolly Rogers hanging around, a lot of no quarter flags. Uh, there's all kinds of flags hanging around here. And I think it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's got a very, very nice pirate theme to it. So. Turning of the sails. Yeah, love it. This is a very weird ambiance in here. <laughs> It was like, I don't know, I feel like we're in a, like under an old roller coaster. It gave me a little Georgia Southern vibe, except this is a, a this whole feels lot bigger. Very old. I like this. It looks like a little stand, looks like a little diner or something. Yeah. As we mentioned, coined by me, Williams Bryce Jr., Willie B. Jr. You got the lights over there. Kind of that same upside, upside down spider look with this press box. But structure wise, they look definitely like siblings. They are in the same family of press boxes. Besides the inside of the stadium, we got the seating and everything. Even the stairs and the seating is a lot better. Half state, you were just a little too tight to sit around people. And uh, that's at least like an extra, extra body. So yeah, when you walk in the inside, it is just all run down. Everything just looked like you were just inside an abandoned amusement park. And when you go out to the actual field, the seats and everything, everything just looks so structurally new and everything just looks so clean around here. It definitely looks like a football school stadium for sure. Actually, pretty surprised about this stadium. Uh, it looks a lot better than it does on the internet, I'll tell you that. I'm glad we pulled you from <laughs> people at the stadium but it sure is loud dude.
that is like the smallest can I've ever seen. Oh, that's okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yes. I think, I think it's stuck. That's it, folks. It's well, cold. Downey Ficklin Stadium. It was nice while it lasted. All right. Well, just like that. Oh, look at the little. Let's go. Rivalry week has come to a close. Uh, some of y'all are probably feeling good. Victory Monday. Some of y'all are probably feeling pretty sad. Some of y'all have bowl games to look forward to, and then some just maybe next year. You know. Hey. As for ECU, this game turned out exactly how a number four versus an unranked opponent should probably go. The final score ended up being 35 to 13. We saw a blocked punt, disrespectful catches by these Cincinnati receivers. Just overall, and, not yeah. a good performance by ECU. But with the bad also came a lot of good. We're just gonna go ahead and get into the review now. All right, now let's get to stadium structure. I, I think stadium structure for this school is a lot different than any other school we've been to so far. The first impressions that I got from this stadium when we walked outside was, first, you saw this humongous tower in front of you from the home side of the stadium. From a far away distance, it looked like it was like some kind of wood, but if you get closer, it's all brick foundation, and it's super tall. I mean, I would have to say it's close to like as tall as Wake Forest, if not taller. Mm -hmm. And the town, town base? Bank tower? Yeah. Was that it? Yeah. And I, you know, I had like a letter that was missing from it, but other town than that, it looked really cool. Also had the cool pirate, ECU pirate logos yeah. on it. Just completed just a couple years ago, I think. That renovation was concluded in 2019. It looks really new, just modern, state of the art. Yeah. So that was a great plus. Yeah. And that's kind of a good prelude to the rest of the structure review. Yeah. The whole outside, the exterior is pretty nice and has all the qualities that you want from a pretty good football program school. It is a horseshoe, but it feels very closed in. The two grandstands are pretty big. There's a double deck, double decker on one side. The home side we were on had a big old, very nice press box. And then the open end zone had the, I think the Murphy Center, like yeah. a field house. And uh, it was also pretty nice. I think it was completed in 2008. Pretty decent scoreboard. The cool thing about that scoreboard, it was the little details that they added to it. You know, you see a, this little cutout portion of the scoreboard and it has like a, a waving flag on the inside of it, which was like yeah. really cool because you know, you want to have like a pirate theme to the stadium. And it was just cool that there was an actual real flag inside of the scoreboard. Yeah. Yeah, it gives that kind of pirates prevailing winds look and vibe way better i think than just putting a graphic or just sticker on there yeah it's like you mentioned they really embrace those flags so yeah and that was also a great part and yeah like overall i called it willie b jr some of the characteristics definitely do feel the same i think mainly the opposing side with those upside down spider legs yeah as we called them in the south carolina video <clears throat> press box was very nice. It kind of looked like a mixture, like a hybrid of South Carolina and Virginia Tech's press box. But yeah, all in all, I thought it was a good mid-pack stadium. The only real con to this stadium, which is a pretty big one, is kind of the infrastructure, the interior of the stadium, where you're, the breezeways you walk through, and things like that. It is very old and rustic looking, and yeah. it's definitely not meant to. Rustic and rusty. To me, it felt like you were walking under an old wooden roller coaster 
with all the rebar, yeah. like the beam supports and trusses. There also isn't a, a lot of lighting in there, aside from the natural lighting. There's some old mildew kind of stains. <laughs> I don't even. Like, I think this stadium has way too many different components to it. Yeah. I had a roller coaster of thoughts about this stadium. When I walked outside, I thought it was so awesome with that tower. And then when you walk inside, there's like no lights whatsoever. Like when you walk in, it just kind of felt like I was in one of those haunted house things at the fair, you know? <laughs> Didn't know what was gonna pop out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then they had like this beer concession that was like kind of hidden yeah. in the back. Now most concession stands are kind of built into the concrete or the yeah. foundation, but this was like, they just put a wood wall up under the stadium. So you got like concrete, you got wood, you got brick. I mean, you just aluminum. I mean, it's just a lot of things to the stadium. Yeah, man. they got all the structure elements. Water, earth, fire, air. One thing we must not forget is the banners on the stadium. You do see a bunch of banners with a lot of legendary players, a couple of banners with bull wins and everything, but it was just so hard to see because it was so tiny. And then when you go over and look at the press box, you got like a nice name placement on it and then right under it, and it just looked like they slapped the sticker on mm -hmm. top uh, on, yeah. like on the press box. But it was just like little details like that that kind of threw me off yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Be proud of them, put them up there rather than on the tiny narrow piece. But yeah. But yeah, and then last, got kind of, it was kind of crowded. Just something that definitely could be worked on. If that was fixed and modified, could probably raise this grade up pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. So for stadium structure, I'm gonna give Dowdy Ficklin an 83, which is a B minus. And my final stadium structure grade is going to be an 80. So with Atmosphere, we did have, there was kind of a disadvantage at hand that we did acknowledge, but we also were like, how big of a difference did it really make? So we're not really sure. Or this game did happen to fall on Thanksgiving weekend. So naturally, most people are gonna be out of town. Students are gonna be out of town with their family. So we don't know what the student section normally looks like, but for this being a nationally televised ABC against a top four playoff opponent, expected a lot more. Yeah, just overall the atmosphere was, I don't know, I had mixed feelings about this, man. With the amount of people that they had, I think it was like 75% capacity. I think it was like 38,000 total people there, but it took a long time for people to fill up the stands. It kind of shocked me a little bit, you know, considering, yeah. you know, when you said the number four team. Surprisingly, the fans were still pretty loud for the amount of people yeah. that they had. The fans that were there were definitely solid. Other factors that go along with atmosphere, such as the band, they were solid. It was a good band. The tailgate. Gating the tailgating was awesome. Yep. Especially the walkway to the yeah. home stadium. It's like the specialty suite lots or whatever. Yeah. That was awesome. The intro was way better. I, like, I, we I, didn't I, know what to expect. I don't really think they had much of an intro, but the little pirate guy with his cutlass swords yeah. ran out. That was really cool. The purple haze smoke they blew. That was a nice touch to it. And yeah, like they had everything there. It was just, they just didn't have the fan firepower that yeah. we were hoping to see. But again, we don't want that to take too big of a hit because this is Thanksgiving weekend. So with that, that's it. going to the grades. Yeah. All right. And for atmosphere, my final grade is going to be a 78. Mine's going to be a little higher. It's going to be an 80, B minus. All right, and on the scenic value, we're not going to talk too much about scenic value. Yeah. Um, there really wasn't much to it in Greenville, North Carolina, uh, at least around the stadium. Just a bunch of trees, and the city was a little bit off to the distance, but it was in a sports complex, so it's surrounded by the baseball stadium, uh, basketball complex, etc. So kind of similar to Coastal, you're not really right off the highway or anything yeah. to that extent. One thing that I did like, I did really like the flag set up um, oh, yeah. over by us. It was pretty cool and it really captures that that ship, the sails at full mast and everything. That gained it a few points for me, but then again, not really too much in terms of scenic value. So here are grades. Scenic value, since there really isn't too, too much going on, gave it the same grade. It got a double D 69. Very nice. On to the next category of history and tradition. Was kind of average on both parts. 
very average in terms of history and tradition. You know, yeah. sometimes the team will have a lot of history, but not many traditions or yeah. vice versa. A lot of traditions, no history. It might have a little bit more tradition than history, but they do have really cool aspects on both sides. To start off with traditions, uh, the intro was pretty dope. The purple haze, the purple smoke coming out, and then the intro song coming into it. You don't really see that with a lot of college football programs like that. And uh, I also really like when you have a real human outside of a mascot uniform yeah. run out. What a few other programs do, but they had a guy dressed as a pirate. I don't know if he's supposed to be Blackbeard specifically, but yeah. he ran out with the full attire and it was pretty cool. Yeah, they got really cool fight song. They do read like a specific poem, kind of just like a old Shakespearean pirate theme kind of poem that they read. Also towards the end of the game, I think every fourth quarter they raise this red flag and it's called uh, no quarters allowed. Pretty much to like impose their will on their opponents. We will not allow a quarter to y'all. We'll give it everything we got. So I thought it was really cool and not only was it in the stadium but there are fans that have yeah, flags bring, wave them high and proud as far as chants go they started off with a cool purple and gold ecu they also did a cool chant when they did score a touchdown one cool thing they do that's slightly different as far as first down chants go a lot of time the commentator will say like that's another insert mascot first down so all he says is that's another and the fans say Pirates first down. On the history side of things, uh, one really interesting fact about the ECU football program in the stadium is that I don't know if you've heard we are if you've seen the movie We Are Marshall. As I'm sure you're aware or know of the Matthew McConaughey We Are Marshall football movie, which is based around whatever team, the 1960 team, following the plane crash where our condolences, the whole team and staff perished due to the plane crash. They were actually on their way back from playing at Dowdy Ficklin ECU heading back to uh, West Virginia but they do honor them ECU honors that team with a plaque we hate that we missed it didn't go see it but yeah it was like it was over in the visitor side yeah but that's a cool really cool just honoring uh, memorial they have for them and it says a lot about ECU too like it's very it's very, very respectful. respectful yeah very respectful. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Dowdy Ficklin, owner of a very prominent tobacco company. I guess he was the primary donor to the stadium. The Murphy Center is a field house, but it doesn't say like Murphy Center field house. There's also the prominent football alums. My favorite Jaguars quarterback, David Garrard. Hey. Zay Jones, a newer NFL kind of star. You know, he's kind of on the come up. He played there just a few years ago. So yeah, they have all those guys. They have, like we said earlier, their bowl wins, conference championships, which really think they need to show off on the bigger press box side. They've also had big upsets against Virginia Tech. Yes, they did. In the mid 2000s. They've been ranked even a couple times here in the 2010s. They're just one of those so, teams you can't sleep on. Yeah, definitely a lot of tradition around the fans and the football program itself. So pretty good grades. All right, for my final score in history tradition, it's gonna be the highest grade of the four grades so far. And my final score is gonna be an 83. Mine's gonna be just one point higher. It's gonna be an 84, which is, yeah, that's just a normal B. So this is the strongest category by far for Dowdy Ficklin. I didn't know going in, but uh, it's a real natural grass field. So that was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Another thing that uh, we threw in there, like South Carolina with field design, is that they have those nice shrubs along the bottom of the stands. Love us some good which, shrubs. Uh, that Willie B. Jr. Yeah. quality right there. Yeah, and then we <clears throat> both have been a fan. I think everyone probably a fan, if you've seen it, of the midfield North oh, yeah. Carolina ECU logo. Logo, or the ECU logo in the shape of North Carolina. It's such a cool logo. Yeah, one of the best midfield art pieces in college football. Yeah, the end zones kind of plain. They were just... Yeah, they didn't, they didn't really color the end zones or anything. You know us, we like colored end zones. But the one thing I can say is the number fonts on the on the edge of the yard yes. markers. That's one thing that I wish that would have stayed consistent with that field design. If they maybe would have kept that same font from the end zone into the number markers, I think that would have added a nice yeah. little touch to it. I mean, they did have nice little sideline trims to it as well. I think overall, if it weren't for those number markers, I think it'd be a good looking stadium or a good looking field. Pretty standard in terms of design layout, but um, overall, 
pretty solid field. Uh, one of the better ones I'd say that we've seen this year. So our grades are however that goes. This is one I felt pretty comparable to Virginia Tech. That's one we really looked at a lot to base it off of, so. And last but not least, my final grade and also Nate's final grade ended up being the same. And to conclude field design, our final grade is going to be a 90. A minus. Good job, ECU. All right, folks. So after doing some calculating, we have our individual final grades and the overall. Mine ended up coming out to being an 80.3, which is a B minus. And my final grade for Dowdy Ficklin Stadium is gonna be a 78.3. Average those out, ended up being a 79.55. We move that up to a 79.6, make it a little easier. Then adding that beverage point in there, that one point brings it up into the next grade tier. So our final score for Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, East Carolina University in Greenville, North Carolina, is a very commendable 80.6, which is a B minus. It's a grade that, looking back at our others, it seems to really fall in line with that, that solid mid-tier, mid-major uh, caliber. I really enjoyed this stadium and this game, even though it wasn't close. This stadium definitely has a lot of potential. I would say it's on the, the precipice. 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 What the dog of being a very solid intermediate stadium 50,000 you know it's kind of right in the middle but yeah they just redid that interior well, near the concessions yep. <clears throat> got rid of that outdated kind of rebar metal looking all the trusses in there just made it more solid fill yeah. open air yeah and just add more light it was very dark so. i mean you could tell it was just like three lights on one side three lights on the other but if you add more lights maybe renovate the inside of the stadium this grade might be a lot higher might make the higher b's maybe a lower a guys i know this is a sad thing to say but this is officially the end of the college football season you know we had a really fun season had a lot of memories had a lot of fun interesting road trips interactions with people mm -hmm. you know this only makes us look forward to the next season and other content that we'll be dropping and you know we couldn't have done it without your support and we really appreciate it it's not a goodbye it's a see you later again thank you for your support thank you for sticking with us throughout the whole season. We look forward to posting more content throughout the off season and who knows, you know? Not one last time, cause you know, we might have a quick little announcement video coming up. We do have some more fun ideas planned for you guys. Yeah. So stay tuned for that and just kill that like button like the Bearcats did to the Pirates. Smash that subscribe button, ring that notification <clears throat> bell too. We really like doing videos where we can give you these rundowns on the places in person. Cause like, that's really what these reviews is all about. Cause yeah, you can go in, you can rank these stadiums and put pictures up, but if you haven't actually gone there yourself, you know, how can you get exactly. an accurate rundown idea of things? Only Apple Maps and Google Maps and aerial photos yeah, and stuff. Can, can only go so far. But with that being said, obviously our season is pretty finite. We don't have many games, other things to go to. So please comment and let us know what you'd like us to see during this football off season. You know, yeah. you want us to check out other collegiate stadiums like baseball, basketball, let us know down there. Do you want us to check out pro level venues or do you just want to hear us talk about sports? Absolutely. As big sports fanatics, we love talking everything sports everything current, past, everything about it. So just please let us know. We look forward to making next season an even better one. And we can still say it in this be true. And folks, per usual, we will see you on game day and on the road. And one last time for this regular season, this is Road Team Reviews and we're out. <laughs>